In this video, I'm going to show you all about the ability to import a PowerPoint presentation file into the all new Adobe Captivate. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and definitely share this video with all of your e-learning colleagues. So this is a feature that I traditionally have not used when it came to the classic version of Adobe Captivate. I never found it very useful to me nor satisfying in the results that I received. However, in this new version, in the all new Adobe Captivate, we now have the ability to import a PowerPoint presentation file and actually make it very useful. Let me show you what I mean. To import a PowerPoint presentation file, click on the Import PowerPoint Entry in the left side of the welcome screen. Navigate to where your PPTX file is located and press Import. PPTX files are the only file type that you can import using this method. The all-new Adobe Captivate imports PowerPoint slides using the original file's aspect ratio and resolution. Because PowerPoint slides have a fixed aspect ratio, importing them into Captivate results in slides that are not responsive in design. You will not be able to preview your project using anything other than the desktop view. Text, media, and shapes are imported as standard Captivate components. Since this project file type is not linked to content blocks, the Visual Properties Inspector now includes a transform section, allowing you to resize, reposition, and in some cases flip or even rotate these components. For example, if I wanted to add a slight angle to the title of this course, I could type in a rotation amount of say five degrees, and we could do something similar to the subtitle and just give it kind of a funky look. Text is imported as text boxes that can be fully edited and reformatted as needed. So for example, if I wanted to change the title of this project to space exploration and lose the history of section, I can simply delete that and it makes the change for me. You can modify fonts, formatting, colors, and even features like text outline or drop shadows. One thing I can also do is it doesn't make sense for this to be bottom aligned anymore. So I can change the alignment maybe to middle align and make sure that you know it continues to be in the center of this text box, even if I change its size. Let's say I don't want to use Century Gothic as a font, so I can select a new font such as DM Sans, one of the Google fonts, and I can make that now part of the preset for this particular text design. And that way I can use this preset throughout the entire project. The original PowerPoint file for this project includes speaker's notes in the notes section of the slides. In Adobe Captivate, these notes can be used to generate AI narration scripts for use with either AI voices or AI avatars. Here are the steps to do that. Click on the Generative AI button at the top of your page. Select Generate Avatar. Make the other desired choices. In this case, I'm only going to use the audio portion. We'll go ahead and press Apply. Click on the narration section in my visual properties inspector and click view. And you'll see now the notes that came from the original PowerPoint. I can click on generate and it will start to work on that audio narration. You don't need to wait for that narration to finish. You can return to this slide later and see and hear the results. Here on slide two, we have an example of an image that's been placed on the original PowerPoint slide and has been imported successfully into the all new Adobe Captivate. Media elements such as images can be resized, cropped, and have any filters or formatting from the visual properties inspector applied. 
In this case, I'm not happy with the crop. So one of the things I can do is either double click on the image or click on the pencil edit image icon in my properties inspector and choose a new crop point. So in this case here, perhaps I want to showcase more of that outcropped engine there and I can go ahead and press enter and that new crop persists. I just need to reposition it back in the original position here and there it looks great. Here on slide three, PowerPoint slides with video are imported as slides containing what was previously called event video. Students can play back the video on these slides using the standard controls like play pause, use the scrub bar to quickly go through the video and set their own audio levels and they can even make the video go full screen. Closed captions can also be added to these videos to further make them accessible as well. The all new Adobe Captivate supports various shapes that can be converted and edited within Adobe Captivate using the same shape formatting. So for example, if I was to click on any of these shapes which were imported from the PowerPoint file, you can see I have the additional transform controls like this yellow selection handle and I can adjust my arrow to have it appear however I wish. Or similarly, I can make my star a little bit skinnier or a little bit fatter. With this polygon here, I can adjust the angle at which it seems to be uh, laying. And of course, we also have controls to adjust these various chevrons that exist. We can make them skinny or fat. And even with this 3D cylinder shape, we can adjust seemingly the angle that it seems to be sitting at. And for fun, I just added the happy face just to show that happy face can be imported as a native captivate happy face as well. If you need more shapes, an add shape icon is now available in the left hand toolbar and you can add any of these basic shapes, arrows, callouts, or symbols to any of your Adobe Captivate projects. Certain objects from PowerPoint presentations are only partially supported in the all new Adobe Captivate, such as smart art, charts, 3D models, equations, formulas, and tables, all of which will be converted into non-editable images. The good news is they do come in, just that you can't do as many things with them as you could have done in the original PowerPoint presentation. For example, an astronaut, originally a 3D object, is converted into a static image rather than being deleted outright. And we can certainly apply different image filters or adjust the brightness or the contrast, however you see fit. On this slide here, there's actually a series of objects that in PowerPoint had animations applied to them. Those animations get converted into Adobe Captivate animations. And you can see those not only on the timeline here, but if you select those objects and go to the animation icon in the right hand toolbar, you'll see the reciprocal animation that's been applied. And of course you can change that to anything that you wish to use once it's been brought into Adobe Captivate. You're not stuck with just the animations that came across from PowerPoint. On this final slide where I have some smart art that was in the original PowerPoint presentation file, you can see here it comes in as a static image. And I guess that's fine. You could certainly do something with that. However, if you wanted something a little bit more dynamic, you could move this out of the way and we have access to a whole bunch of different components that we can add to our slide. So for example, if I wanted to add a text caption to replace the text caption that was in the original smart art, I can certainly do that. I'll copy the text from the original PowerPoint file and paste that in there. And we can simply find a nice happy size for that. We'll change the font to something that might be more appropriate for this project here. We'll also change the color of the font to something that looks nice here. 
and we'll make a copy of that and paste in the other text that was part of this as well. Now I don't have exactly the SVG graphics that came from PowerPoint, but I certainly can import any SVG image that I wish. So I can choose Add Media, select SVG, we'll go to System, and we'll find an image of a futuristic looking rocket. I can select the color and change that to a lovely orange. And if I want a similar angle as to what I have here, again, we can use those transform controls to add that sort of 45 degree angle effect there. Also too, I can resize this so it's maybe a little bit more appropriately sized. Let's go ahead and add our other SVG image, which is an image of a globe. And we can also double click on that and change its color to a similar color. And now I can delete that original static image that I no longer need. We'll resize this a little bit here and we'll place that above here. And to keep this as dynamic as possible, I can go over to my animation section within the right hand toolbar and maybe we'll apply an expand effect. We can copy this animation and apply it to all the other objects on this slide as well. So I'm gonna paste that same effect to all of these here. And we'll just make sure our text boxes are appropriately sized. And with the timeline open, of course, we can adjust the appearance of these objects to come in one by one just to add a cool effect there. Let's preview this and see what it looks like. That's kind of cool. So in conclusion, I have to say that the import PowerPoint feature in the all new Adobe Captivate is something that has finally become very useful even to a seasoned Adobe Captivate professional like myself. I can now receive those PowerPoint presentation files from my stakeholders and subject matter experts and even if I don't use them verbatim, I can import those project files into my Captivate project and use a lot of the resources that are within them. Customize them how I will, change them, modify them, crop them, resize them, all that good stuff. Definitely much more useful in the past. I'd be very interested, especially after some time has gone by, if you would be willing to share how you've used the import PowerPoint feature just in the comments below. Thanks in advance if you decide to include that kind of stuff. It definitely helps make uh, future videos for my YouTube channel much more interesting to get your feedback as well. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, Hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.